So it's been a pretty long time since I made a video exclusively dedicated to gorillas. Gorillas related videos are some of my favorite to make and they always seem to do pretty well. So today I'm going to be talking about something I've wanted to talk about for a very long time, that being obviously pirate radio. So if you're familiar with gorillas, then you'll know that there is this massive, complicated, convoluted story surrounding the animated side of the band, the four cartoon characters. And in order to tell this story, gorillas have released a massive amount of supplementary material outside of their music and their music videos. There's interviews, books, podcasts, sex tapes, but one of the most prominent fixtures of the gorillas lore, if you will, is the gorillas website. Or at least it used to be. If you go to the website today, it looks like this. Ooh, That's boring. I don't like it. But if you visited the website at any point from 2010 to 2016, it would look like this. Wow, That's really I love cool. playing web-based adventure games. So during phase three, AKA the plastic beach era of gorillas, the website had all of these really cool features. There was a web game you could play where you could explore the island and like complete different tasks for Murdoch around the island. One of my favorite bits from that game was there's part of a mission where you have to go talk to these two seagulls and the seagulls are voiced by Damon and Jamie. Have you ever tried charting? And of course, in case you don't know anything about gorillas, Damon and Jamie are Damon Albarn and Jamie Hewlett, who are the two real life members behind the band. Although if you don't know anything about gorillas, I wouldn't start with this video. I would maybe watch like my gorillas iceberg or something. Another feature of this Plastic Beach era website was a radio show broadcast every week called Pirate Radio. I say every week, but there were really only five episodes. The first four episodes were released across January and February of 2010 to promote Plastic Beach, which would come out in March of that same year. And then they released a fifth episode a year later in April of 2011 to promote their subsequent album, The Fall. Pirate Radio is hosted by none other than Murdoch Nichols himself, and he's the only character to feature in all five episodes, as well as the only character in the first three episodes. The final two also feature 2D. The episodes consist of Murdoch talking about... What is he talking about? Do you know, my little, my little tinkle has just completely vanished. You know, it's like a little baby carrot. And the broadcast is interspersed with songs of Murdoch's choice, some of which were, at the time, previously unheard songs from their upcoming album Plastic Beach, or as he likes to call it... Stinkfish. Stinkfish. Pink! Stinkfish. Stinkfish. Stinkfish! Little house on the stinkfish. Ah! And I've always thought this was such a clever method of not only promoting your album, but also catching fans up on the storyline of the band. The way Phase 2 ended was complicated, and after that, they took a break for a pretty long time. So obviously, fans were dying to know what had been happening with the band over the past nearly five years. And so having one of the characters of the band explicitly tell you his situation and the circumstances that led up to it is such a clever way of catching fans up and also really pulling them into the world of gorillas. Wow, that's excellent. Nice one. Can I join in? Yeah, yeah, why not? Well, can I do some vocals? Yeah, you this. This thing, that thing there. Yeah, just, just, just speak into it. Oh, um, yeah, um, oh, right, I think I've got it. Okay, here goes. Because when you listen to this radio show in this audio-only format, you really feel like you've stumbled upon this random broadcast from some madman out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Great! <laughs> Murdoch's got his own show! Murdoch's got his own show! La 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 la! Hoi! La la! I must have some rum. I think a huge part of what makes Pirate Radio so captivating, though, is the voice acting and the performance by Phil Cornwell. Phil Cornwell has been voicing Murdoch from the very beginning. He's been doing it for over 20 years at this point, and I don't think it's appreciated enough how many of the mannerisms and idiosyncrasies that are now synonymous with Murdoch actually originated from Phil and from the different acting choices that he made. I do that a lot, actually. That, uh, oh, that's his, uh, <laughs> that's his oh, sound effect. Is it, uh, 
It's also worth mentioning that Phil Cornwell is an absolute god at improvisation. He's done so many live broadcasts and radio interviews for Gorillaz when they've really been keeping him on his toes. And throughout everything, he maintains this really solid grip on the character of Murdoch, despite the frankly ludicrous situations that they put his character in. I'd like to imagine that like every time he sits in the booth to record something for Gorillaz, they give him like a little character sheet, just refreshing him on who Murdoch is and like catching him up on what he's been up to, and it's like 50 pages long. I would also imagine that the character sheet they gave him for Pirate Radio would look something like this. I ultimately don't think anybody else could play this character or pull off the performance that we see here in Pirate Radio. Because of course he's given an outline, he's given somewhat of a script, you know, characters he has to mention and events he has to talk about, but for the most part it's just Phil Cornwell being left to his own devices in a booth for like an hour. And not only does he manage to keep up the voice and keep up the character for such an extended period of time, he's also able to just drop in these little tidbits about the character that we never would have known otherwise. Ronnie Corbett, get out of here. I love Ronnie Corbett. I quite fancy him to be honest i'd like to do it with him i tell you that for nothing anyway <laughs> this rum's good and he's able to kind of strike this balance so well because his performance in pirate radio is first of all it's very funny like it's so funny you know this island yeah it's been dry for so long so long it has Oh, not anymore though. Oh, 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 Murdoch's here. Oh, oh, trinkies, trinkies. Oh, oh, oh. But it's also at times incredibly emotional. Like he has to do some really serious acting and convey a lot of really heavy emotions just with his voice. I had to, I just had to go away. You know, I, I did. You know, it's too much pressure. It's too much for Murdoch. You know, I was just losing it. I, I, was, I, I, I was just. You know, it wasn't. I think I'm gonna have some rum. Hang on. Throughout the course of these pirate radio broadcasts, we can see Murdoch becoming extremely isolated and and really losing his grip on reality and losing his mind. And Phil Cornwell is able to sell that downward spiral so well while still infusing enough comedy to keep it lighthearted and entertaining. Basically, the reason I'm here, because I, I don't know if I told you in the last show, but I was escaping for some, for some, some pirates. Oh, God, they were scary! Oh, God, one of them had a huge head! Oh, I didn't like it! I keep seeing his head in my dreams. Oh, hang on, let's just have some more rum. Hang on a second. More than anything, Pirate Radio is a character study of Murdoch Nichols. I think we can all agree at this point that Murdoch is pretty much the protagonist of Gorillaz. I do think in the past there was more of an equal focus on each band member, but Murdoch's always been more front and center. I mean, Rise of the Ogre began and ended with his perspective, and he's always been something of a controversial character in the sense that, well, he sucks. <laughs> he's just like an awful person that does awful things like a hundred percent of the time. But despite that, he's really become a fan favorite, and not even in the way that most villains are, where you love how just unabashedly evil they are and you love to hate them. People are rooting for Murdoch. Like, I'm rooting for Murdoch, man. He's my all-time favorite character from any piece of media. And also, I just want to point out Jamie once said that a lot of the events in Murdoch's life were based off of things that happened to Damon. And like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like, what do you mean? <laughs> Which parts? That's like such a troubling piece of information to just drop and then never address again. But really, I think it's a combination of Phil Cornwell's performance and Cass Brown's writing that make Murdoch such a compelling character. I've talked about Cass Brown before, I think either in my Gorilla's Iceberg or in my video about humans, maybe it was both, but I truly believe that Cass Brown deserves way more credit for making Gorillas what it is today. It's easy to give Jamie the credit for everything to do with the cartoon characters and the fictional aspect of the band, 
And I mean, yeah, he created the characters and yes, he directs all the music videos and yes, he has most of the ideas, but Cass is the one that strung everything together into a coherent story. He's the one that was writing the interviews. He's the one that was keeping the characters consistent. He wrote Rise of the Ogre for God's sake. Cass Brown is the reason that these characters are who they are. Or were, I guess, because these new writers don't know what they're doing. Cass wrote Murdoch with this very tragic backstory, and you can trace pretty much every single one of his defining characteristics to some kind of traumatic event in his life. His desire for fame, his selfishness, his hypersexuality even. The life that he's had has twisted him into this manipulative, aggressive, abusive monster. But Cass had always been so good at sprinkling in these little bits of humanity throughout his character, which is also something Phil Cornwell did in his acting performance. And I think Pirate Radio is the best example, not only of just Gorilla's lore at its peak, but also writing and acting working together perfectly. In these broadcasts, we see Murdoch at rock bottom. He's been using people as pawns to get what he wants, including his bandmates, for his entire life. And now he's finally being confronted with the consequences of it. He's alone on this island, as far from society as you could possibly be. He's extremely isolated. He's turned to alcohol to cope with this grief and this guilt that he has over everything he's done in his past. And every week, he broadcasts because he desperately wants to feel less alone. Hello? Hello? Ah, well, uh, I don't know if I'm, well, well, if I might be just, you know, broadcasting into the middle of nowhere. Can't tell, really. It's very difficult to tell. Here it is, uh, imaginary listeners. I don't think there is anyone listening out there. Do you know what? I don't care. I don't even care. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Uh, 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 uh. This cold, hard exterior that he has completely breaks down and he starts explicitly expressing regrets over all the things that he's done and and he's reflecting with the complicated relationships he has with his bandmates and his complicated feelings about other men and his complicated feelings about himself, like as a person. You really just get the sense that he's lost his grip. And you know what kind of person he is. You know all the terrible things that he's done, and really you know that he's not a good person. But despite everything, your heart just breaks for him. It's all done so well, and it is so fascinating to listen to. And I also think that's part of what's so frustrating about the way Murdoch is written today. You can tell that the writers so badly want to give him a redemption arc, which really is something that Pirate Radio had planted the seeds for, but these modern writers also seem to feel as though they don't have a story without him. They seem to overly rely on Murdoch doing terrible things in order to keep the story going, so they've really been stuck in this repetitive very irritating cycle where Murdoch will show signs of wanting to be better and start being kinder to his bandmates and then he'll slip up and start being horrible again and then we're back to square one. He stops beating 2D and starts to form a friendship with him and then he gets thrown in jail. He breaks down crying because he's so remorseful over all the things he's done to his bandmates and then he's right back at it again. Yes, cry. But I think Pirate Radio does such an excellent job of kind of walking this line and making Murdoch both an irredeemable monster and a broken, guilt-ridden man. He's such a complex and morally gray character, and I think all of these psychological intricacies of his character are explored to the fullest of their potential on this stupid little lonely radio show. It's such a simple piece of media, it's just a series of audio recordings with no accompanying visual, but it manages to be so powerful and emotionally impactful. Again, it feels like you've stumbled upon this broadcast from the middle of nowhere, being hosted by this horrible, monstrous, insane, pitiful person. 
I would absolutely recommend this radio show to anybody that hasn't heard it. Whether you're already a massive Gorillaz fan or you don't even know who Murdoch Nichols is, because it is so incredibly captivating. It's funny, it's emotional. It's a look inside the mind of, in my opinion, one of the most interesting fictional characters I've ever come across. And outside of their music, of course, it is my favorite piece of Gorillaz media of all time. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you liked me, be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you want, you can even turn notifications on so you'll be the first to know when I'm broadcasting from my brand new stinking palace of sin. Anyways, it's gonna be all from me. I'm gonna go listen to my favorite song. That, of course, being Stinkfish. <laughs>